Okay then, so there's one more thing I'd like to do, and that's just to address this layout a little bit. Now, it's in a grid, and that's fine, but look at all of the empty space vertically between the different cards. I don't particularly like that, because we can't control the height of the card. Well, I guess you could, and have drop downs, but it would be nice if we could implement maybe a masonry grid system here, whereby if there's space vertically here, this one will be shifted up, and the same for this one, and so forth down the grid. Now, unfortunately, at the minute, Material UI does not offer this feature out of the box. However, we can use a third-party package and achieve this effect. And that package is called React Masonry CSS. So, first of all, we need to install this. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to install it in a second. But before we do, let's just scroll down here and see what it looks like. Basically, it's just a Masonry component and inside that component we have an array of jsx items now in our application if we go to notes we have an array of items at the minute each one is a grid item but we can replace that with a div or something else and then if we surround that with the masonry component and set it up using these class names and also the breakpoints then it's going to automatically turn that into a masonry grid for us. It's really simple to use. We just use this one component and a bit of CSS that they give us as well. So let's start off by installing this into our project. Did I copy this? I think I did. Let me just copy it again. Cool. And then let's go over here and paste in npm install react masonry CSS. All right, so now that's done, the next thing we need to do is import it into this notes component. So import masonry from React Masonry CSS. Now, the next thing we need to do is come down here and we're not going to use this grid anymore. So let me get rid of that grid and this grid as well. And also the grid items, we're not going to use those. So let me get rid of that and replace this with a div and get rid of this and replace it with the closing div. And also these breakpoints right here, let's get rid of those. Okay. So that's all we need to do inside here. And we're still keeping the note card. That's exactly the same. But now surrounding these divs that are going to be output, we need our masonry component. So let's do that masonry like so and put the closing tag right at the end. So let's cut that and paste it right here. And remember, there was a few props that we needed to add on. So let me go back over here and I'm going to grab all of these props. So let me copy those and paste them right here. So we have the breakpoints right here, but we're going to make our own breakpoints in a minute. So let me take that out. Then we have this class name, my masonry grid, and also the column class name. So this is to do with the columns inside the grid, like the inner workings of this component. So we need to add the styles for this. Now, the masonry documentation gives us these styles. So let's grab all of those. And by the way, I suppose you could do this in make styles, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to place them in this global style sheet. So this is the masonry grid component styles right here. So it uses flex under the hood. Then this is the column styles, which we pass in. And also this is for each div inside the masonry grid. So if we take a look at this part right here, we can see it targets those divs that are output. All right, so the only thing left to do is the breakpoints. So what I'm going to do is create a constant for this right here. I'll say const breakpoints, and you could match these up to be the same breakpoints as Material UI. I'm not going to do that, but I probably normally would in a real project. But what I'm going to do is say, first of all, the default number of columns is going to be three. And then after that, we need property names which reflect the widths of the screen and how many columns we want for that width and down. So for example, I could say 1,100 pixels when you reach that width and we're going from large to small here, I want you to reduce it to two columns. And then when you get to 700 pixels and down, I want you to reduce it to one column so they all stack on top of each other. And then all we do is pass in the breakpoints right here. So that's it. That's as simple as it is. So if we go back to our project now, we can see that now we have this masonry grid right here. Now there is a bit of funkiness going on. If you look in the corners, you can see this gray bit popping out and that's because we gave these a background color. So let's get rid of that. Over here, we can remove this background of gray from the divs, save that, and hopefully this will look a lot better. Awesome. So that is a nice looking grid now. 
And there we go, my friends. That is the end of this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please do not forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And I'm going to see you in the very next tutorial series.